Hi everyone. We're waiting two to three minutes before starting the webinar to accommodate for the rest of the attendees who are in the middle of connecting. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us and thanks for being part of our community. Just a few reminders before starting. Uh, please note that this webinar is being recorded and it will be publicly shared. We will post the recordings in our community at aka.ms slash security webinars. Also, uh, since this is a, a recap of a conference, it will be slightly under 60 minutes. During uh, this time, please uh, feel free to ask uh, questions at any time by typing them in the live event Q&A window by clicking on the ask question button. Be aware that any questions you post will be publicly visible. However, if you prefer, you can post your question anonymously by checking the box right below where you enter it. Uh, we often get many questions on these webinars and we will do our best to respond to all of them in real time. In the event, if the answer was not provided or if you may have additional questions post this event, please don't hesitate to raise them on our Azure Sentinel forum at aka.ms slash Azure Sentinel community. If you're listening to this after the fact as a recording, that's also a great place to ask a question. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. You can do so at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. And uh, while you're there, please join our community by visiting aka.ms slash security community. That's the best way to ensure you don't miss any feature features webinar or major announcements. Uh, on our community, you can speak directly to our engineering teams that create our security products. You'll be able to influence our product designs and get early access to changes by doing things like participating in private previews, 
you can sign up for that at aka.ms slash security private preview. And while you're there, you can request features, give feedback, review our product roadmaps, attend in-person events, or join webinars like this. We, basic, uh, we believe that the best uh, way to improve our products is by removing any barriers between you and the people that create them. So we hope you'll join us. In today's session, Sarah will provide a recap and explanation of Azure Sentinel announcements from last week's RSA conference. Sarah Fender is a group uh, product manager from our Azure Sentinel team. And without further ado, I will turn it over to Sarah. Sarah, floor is yours. Thank you so much. So I'm excited to share with you um, some of the announcements that we made last week at the RSA conference. Uh, 2020 in San Francisco and and before I get started though it's it's amazing the progress that we've made um, I don't know if you're aware but Azure Sentinel first launched at the RSA conference in 2019 um, which was uh, a little bit later in the spring so actually you know less than a year ago we launched Azure Sentinel to public preview um, and we did that uh, made that announcement at the RSA conference so it's amazing to see the the sort of pace of innovation and uh, since then uh, building up toward the September uh, general availability of Sentinel, but even since then we made a, a set of, of announcements at Ignite. Hopefully you saw those and then just continue with that really rapid pace of of continuing to evolve and and add new product value uh, to the to the service uh, for the benefit of you and, and your customers. A pretty quick run. The top news and we'll drill a couple uh, a couple of areas a bit deeper um, as you heard in the introduction we probably won't take a full hour today um, it will we'll be able to I think uh, to work through the the top news relatively quickly but we will save some time for question and answers uh, toward the end so with that, let's drill down into some of the top news. One of the biggest things uh, we announced at the RSA conference was a promotional offer that allows customers to endpoint their import, I should say, their AWS uh, logs, this is specifically their CloudTrail logs, into Azure Sentinel at no additional charge through June 2020. And we did this because we really want to continue to, to land the importance of, of, um, of helping you to monitor your multi-cloud environments. So as you may know, many um, Microsoft uh, offers a, a number of data sources that are also ingested into Azure Sentinel at no additional cost. Things like your Azure Activity Logs, which would be somewhat equivalent to the CloudTrail Logs, um, some of your Microsoft Office Activity data, and of course, all of your Microsoft Security Alerts. So any alerts that are being generated by the uh, Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection or Cloud App Security or Azure Security Center. So we, we offer a number of those uh, today at no additional cost as a benefit of running um, in the Microsoft Cloud. We wanted to extend that to really help to land to the importance that we see um, uh, in extending that to other clouds as well and to make it easy for you to, to try out um, uh, Azure Sentinel in the context of, of your multi-cloud deployments. So you can adjust your logs for free and it's very easy to do that. There's a connector you can see on the screen here and a couple of clicks you can begin to ingest that data into Sentinel. And then we also offer um, a number of ways that you can get value on top of that data very quickly. And the first of those is workbooks. Um, these are interactive dashboards and there are two that come out of the box uh, with the um, uh, AWS connector. And this provides you with a variety of different insights into your AWS log data. There are also built in queries and analytics rules um, that power threat detection and hunting and Azure Sentinel and those also are designed to leverage um, the AWS CloudTrail log data um, as part of those. There's a couple of great blogs on the Azure Sentinel uh, tech community blogs that provide more detail about how you can leverage this data um, to drive some interesting insights and, and detection. So I encourage you to check that out if you haven't seen it already and no additional costs, so no reason to not connect to those logs and, and begin to explore them in Azure Sentinel. Another um, important capability that we launched is, is really the beginning of a journey to extend not only beyond the Azure and Microsoft Cloud into the multi-cloud, um, but also to extend uh, that to with this growing set of IoT devices uh, that need to be managed um, across your 
uh, expanding digital estate. And so the first step toward that is uh, being able to onboard data from the Azure IoT hubs. So if you are using Azure Security Center for IoT to help protect those hubs, you can now ingest alert data um, from Azure Security Center, as well as alerts that are firing from third parties on uh, the devices connected to those hubs. And so again, there's a data connector, just like we saw for AWS, that makes it easy to ingest that data. There are workbooks and queries that help you to get insights into that data. We're looking at an example of, of um, one of those workbooks here on, uh, on the screen. Um, we also uh, announced integration with um, uh, Upstream, which is kind of an interesting uh, um, uh, security vendor in the connected car space. Um, and so you now can ingest alerts um, from their API into Azure Sentinel as well. This is another indication of how we're really trying to look across your entire extended digital estate and to enable you to ingest all of the security data into Sentinel and to use that data uh, to get insights across your environment and for detection and for investigation um, and hunting. We know that attacks are unfortunately not just being isolated um, to, to one of these environments. Once an attacker gains access, um, uh, into your digital estate, you know, they want to move within that estate to find high value assets or to, to execute on their objection, objectives. And so really being able to look across that entire estate is super important. There's even been a couple of, of pretty high profile examples where, you know, an IoT device was compromised and that led to a much larger scale um, uh, compromise of, of an enterprise network. So looking across super important um, and we're going to make that as easy as possible by supporting all of your cloud environments, all of your IoT and connected devices, and of course um, on-prem, which we do today as well. Okay, as we talk about how to easily ingest uh, data um, from across that estate, uh, data connectors are important um, for a variety of, um, of third party security products and services, and we're constantly adding new data connectors um, to help uh, support that. So we had a couple that we announced uh, at RSA. First is Forcepoint, um, and, um, and there are actually three new connectors that are available for them. One for their next gen firewall um, log data, one for their cloud access security broker solution, and that brings in logs and events and another for their data loss prevention um, uh, solution, and that's pulling an incident uh, or alert data. And that includes connectors and workbooks and, and queries as part of that uh, integration. Another new uh, one is Zimperium. So this is Zimperium's a mobile threat defense vendor. And so uh, from there, we are ingesting through the connector threat and mitigation data. Uh, and finally is Squadra Technologies. They are uh, an interesting company that provides security for removable media, so USB devices, for example. Uh, and so again, ingesting data uh, from the connector and then providing insights into that via workbooks and queries. We also have some other interesting third party integrations, uh, not necessarily data connectors, but other ways that we're leveraging um, insights from third parties um, into Azure uh, Sentinel. Uh, the first one actually does sort of fall into the data connector category, but it's a bit unique. Um, so calling it out a bit separately, and that is support for taxi. So there's a data connector um, in Sentinel that enables you to ingest threat intelligence from any taxi server in the sticks format, lots of acronyms, uh, but but um, sticks and taxi are, are a common, um, both a schema and a protocol um, for um, sharing threat intelligence. Um, many threat intelligence providers and threat intelligence feeds support this as a means to, uh, to um, share or integrate threat intelligence. And so their new uh, connector makes that super easy to do um, in the context of, of Azure uh, Sentinel. Another uh, threat intelligence related integration that we announced was with reversing labs. Um, and this um, is a couple of different elements to this integration. First is that Traversing Labs um, released a notebook sample um, that makes it easy to leverage their threat intelligence in the, the context of, of Azure Notebooks. And then the other is that they built an Azure Logic app, Apps Connector 
um, and also released a related sample playbook that you can use to enrich alerts from Azure Sentinel with threat intelligence from reversing labs. Um, so this is a scenario that we see more and more um, where customers want to enrich alert data with additional um, insights, might be threat intelligence related or you know, even pulling in data from a CMDB or other kinds of solutions to inform um, you know, uh, triage or response um, to those particular threats. So this is this is one of those um, uh, kind of growing sets of integrations via reversing labs. Another new one is integration with SOC Prime. Um, we're actually going to do a bit of a deep dive on this one. It's a pretty interesting case. Um, uh, SOC Prime offers, among other things, uh, a threat detection marketplace um, where um, you, they collect um, uh, from community and, and security researchers uh, a set of detection rules um, uh, in Sigma and other formats, and they make it easy to then push those uh, rule sets into Azure Sentinel. Um, so that will actually come in in the right KQL format um, and generate an Azure Sentinel analytic rule. So again, we'll take a, a closer look at that in a moment. And then finally is, is Logstash, um, and this supports integration with a wide variety of data sources. Um, so we see many cases where um, you know, there's Kafka uh, and Logstash um, um, being used as, as a data pipeline um, into Azure Sentinel. And, and that is supported today, but we're working on and now have in, in preview um, a, a native connector um, for Azure Sentinel um, that is fully supported and adds some additional capabilities in terms of, of managing that, that data pipeline from Logstash to Azure Sentinel. We are constantly adding uh, new detections, um, both rule-based or KQL-based, as well as advanced um, uh, detections based on advanced analytics, machine learning. And we have a new scenario um, uh, based on that, uh, some of our ML models that, uh, that are designed to help fuse together multiple event and alert data sources um, to more effectively detect threats. There's a great blog post. It's linked here um, uh, and also um, can be accessed from uh, our tech community um, uh, blog. We'll do kind of a recap here that'll point to that. Um, and that, um, uh, again, that kind of goes into the, the detail around how Fusion works and what the vision for that is. But just at a very, very high level, um, um, the idea is to look at different alert and event sources to apply some machine learning um, to build out a probabilistic kill chain. Um, so we've got, you know, maybe some low fidelity alerts or interesting, but not necessarily um, high fidelity events um, that are that are being generated across the environment. And, and those can create a lot of noise. Um, and we really need to understand which of these are, are important and likely indicative of an attack. And so if we can link those things together in this concept that we call fusion, um, we can much more effectively detect threats that might have gone unnoticed and, and um, help analysts understand which alerts um, you know, represent real threats that require uh, immediate investigation. So that's a very high pass uh, at Fusion. Please, if you're interested, learn more. We, we think that Fusion is an incredibly important concept um, and incredibly useful um, tool um, in the ML tool chest. And we've got 35 or so um, scenarios that are supported today. And this is a new one um, that we're adding at RSA. Many, many more to come. This is a concept we think is super important and keep investing in. With that said, the new uh, Fusion scenario looks at firewall logs, in particular from Palo Alto Networks, and fuses those together with, with alerts from the Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection um, Service. So this particular um, example um, uh, kind of indicates an attack um, where an, an endpoint, we see an endpoint is connecting to a Tor network um, followed by suspicious activity on the internal network. So in this case, Microsoft Defender ATP is detecting that a user inside the network made a request to a Tor anonymization service. And on its own, this, this incident would be pretty, you know, relatively low level fidelity. It's suspicious, but it doesn't quite rise to the level of, of a high level, you know, highly actionable prioritized threat. So Palo Alto Networks 
their firewalls register uh, this anomalous activity from or register activity from uh, that same IP address. But again, it isn't risky enough to block. So if we look at these two separate incidents, neither of these alerts would necessarily get elevated. But together they indicate a multi-stage attack, and that's where fusion comes in. Um, It's merged together with a, uh, an event uh, uh, detection um, relative to a PowerShell program on the endpoint that connects to a suspicious IP address followed by suspicious activity on that internal network. So anyway, this is just one example of where, again, we're kind of taking these uh, discrete um, events and alerts and fusing those together and, and, uh, and using ML to do that. Again, it's not just a simple correlation. It's, it's, it's a, a model that's sort of learning and, and building out that um, uh, that um, probabilistic kill chain. Another big and important announcement was that Azure Sentinel is now available in preview in the Azure government uh, environments. Um, so uh, many of our government customers are eager to take advantage of Azure Sentinel, but, but need to, to operate that within the Azure government environment, and that is now available. We also had some advancements on um, uh, the API and integration front. So the Azure Sentinel APIs became generally available. They were in preview before that. And we also released a new API to support incidents. This is one that was commonly requested um, by, uh, by customers. Um, Alert integration exists today, both through the Azure Sentinel API and also through the Microsoft Graph Security API. Um, but incidents, um, which are kind of this higher level collection of alerts and related um, bookmarks and, and artifacts, um, are, are an important um, and highly requested kind of enter, enter uh, integration uh, point. So that is now available, uh, the incidents API, in addition to GA of the other uh, existing APIs. Some advancements on the multi, in, in terms of multi-tenant support. So this comes up in the context of managed security service providers, MSSPs, but also in the context of large customers that are running multiple instances of Azure Sentinel or multiple Azure Sentinel workspaces. So for those of you who are familiar, Azure Lighthouse um, enables um, uh, easier management uh, of those multiple workspaces. Um, and um, has been supported for some time. But we did get some additional asks for a unified dashboard where customers or, or service providers can view in particular incidents across these multiple workspaces or tenants. So Lighthouse is going to make it easy for you to navigate from one to the other, um, uh, one workspace from the other, but doesn't provide inherently, uh, or, or previously I should say, the ability to, to have a unified view or portal that looks across all of them. So that's the new development that we have here is a new incidents view um, that enables you to get one um, sort of queue, one list of all of the incidents across um, the connected uh, workspaces. And, and so you've got kind of one, one um, uh, a list of incidents to triage and respond to and prioritize across uh, that customer set. We also um, uh, are uh, enabling um, uh, organizations again whether they be MSSPs or large organizations that are running multiple workspaces to more effectively manage configuration, rules, playbooks, and workbooks um, through automated processes. So we'll do a little bit of a deep dive on both of those here in a minute to talk about some of the new capabilities um, that are available there. Community is an incredibly important um, part of Azure Sentinel, um, and uh, we use the, the term relatively broadly, the community efforts um, uh, that you heard about at the beginning of, of the webinar in terms of our, our tech community and, and the blogging and forums and those kinds of things, the webinars like this one um, that help to, to support you. But we also have a GitHub community um, where we hope that uh, members of our broader community will contribute um, playbooks and analytics rules and other content. Um, and these things get validated and then ultimately show up inside of the Azure Sentinel product experience. Um, and we think it's just incredibly important. Our own Microsoft um, security researchers contribute um, to the GitHub community detections and, and workbooks and playbooks. Um, and we hope that others will do the same 
defending against threats in today's uh, world is an incredibly hard job for all of us. And we think we can do that more effectively if we work together as a community to share insights and, and learnings um, uh, as, as we all kind of progress through this, this hard journey. So to help um, incent uh, uh, contributions uh, to that GitHub, uh, we have launched a new rewards and recognition program. And the way that that works is that there is a wish list um, that is um, sourced from the community and customers. Um, and each of those um, items on the wish list, that could be a, a playbook or an analytic rule or a workbook or other kinds of content, um, are listed there with some um, uh, requirements and and a price uh, or reward value i should say um, so look through those find something that interests you uh, develop and test uh, the content be the first to publish um, that content um, onto the github and you'll get rewarded um, with up to a thousand dollars so the range is 250 to a thousand uh, dollars and we just launched this at RSA and we already had uh, a couple of our wish list items get fulfilled. So that's that's fantastic. I um, also wanted to note that you can suggest additions to the wish list. So, you know, um, if you have an idea for something that would add value to the community, but you don't see it on the wish list, you know, make the suggestion and we'll evaluate that and, and potentially add that um, uh, to the wish list in the future. So the wish list is constantly evolving um, as things get fulfilled off of the wish list. We'll add new things to the wish list. Um, so check back there regularly, suggest things that you'd like to see on the wish list and and contribute and get rewarded. I will mention also that the we did a, a pretty um, significant refresh on the GitHub, um, so lots of new content in the wiki um, and uh, additional guidance, um, uh, pointers to um, getting started resources and just lots of new content that we hope will make it easier for you to uh, understand what you can contribute, how to contribute, how to validate your uh, contributions um, uh, and that sort of thing. So if you haven't been to the GitHub site recently, I encourage you to check that out. Um, be sure to visit the wish list um, and, and participate uh, in contributing content. So there are some new analytic rule settings um, that enable you to have more control over alert and incident creation. And um, this is a commonly requested um, capability from uh, customers and partners um, that we just rolled out. So this enables you to, um, to determine um, whether to create an incident for alerts that are triggered by this analytic rule. So if you don't enable this, an alert is generated and you can still use that alert to trigger playbooks or to um, correlate with other events and um, alerts to generate incidents. But the discrete alert that is generated from a match against this rule will not on its own create a new incident. We also added the ability to group, uh, group alerts into a single incident. Sorry, it looks like we've got a typo here. So you can do that um, by simply turning that on um, and then you have some uh, configurations about how you want to group um, those alerts. So you can set a time frame for um, you know, all alerts that are generated within five hours, 24 hours, get grouped into the same incident and you can determine how that grouping will happen. So the recommended approach is to group alerts into a single incident if all of the entities match. Um, so if you have a, a user entity um, on this uh, uh, analytic rule and an IP address, you know, anytime you see that that's the same user and the same IP address um, and alert, those will get um, uh, grouped together into a single incident. You have some other options. Um, you can just group everything um, into a single incident, all alerts that are triggered um, within that time period, or you can group alerts into a single incident if there is a particular entity that matches. So let's say you don't care about user, um, for example, you just want anything that matches a malicious IP address, for example. So you could turn on grouping, select IP um, as the entity, um, and, and you'll group alerts uh, according to that. And then finally, you can uh, um, decide whether to reopen incidents if there's a new matching alert. So let's say you had something from a couple of days ago, you resolved the incident, you closed it, but now you've got a new match. 
um, for that. Do you want to reopen that incident and, and group that new alert um, into that um, or create a new incident? Um, there's also some new capabilities that are coming very, very soon, which will enable you to disaggregate alerts. Um, so we're talking now, we have been talking about grouping into incidents, um, uh, but there is a common request um, to, when an analytic rule fires within a period of, of uh, you know, the um, five minutes, let's say it's looking back over the last five minutes, all of the matches for event data for that period of time get grouped into um, or aggregated, I should say, into one alert um, with multiple related events. So the, the request has come in for each of those related events to um, uh, create a standalone and, and, and you know a separate alert for each of those. So that is coming soon. Hopefully I did a reasonable job explaining that. So today within the time window of the analytic rule, alerts are grouped together, aggregated I should say, into a single alert. Soon you'll be able to split those out automatically into multiple alerts. Um, the other thing um, that's that uh, we hear about and is now available is the ability to suppress alerts for a specified period of time after an alert is generated. So you've got a match against this analytic rule and an alert is generated from that. You don't want to continue to see um, you know, more hits, more alerts generated for, for that specific rule for a period of time. The idea here is to give you more control um, over um, uh, the volume of alerts that are generated to reduce the noise that you're seeing to group things um, in intelligent ways into single incidents. So we, we expect that this will make um, the process of, of triaging and prioritizing and responding to incidents uh, and alerts much simpler. OK, so I promised a couple of deep dives. One is into the SOC Prime integration, uh, and we'll start with that. So SOC Prime um, uh, supports uh, Sigma. Uh, so I thought we would start with a, a quick uh, description of what is Sigma. So Sigma is for log files, what Snort is for network traffic, and what Yara is for files. So it enables uh, analytics reuse and sharing, uh, and it decouples rules from um, the specific SIM uh, query language. Um, so uh, um, uh, so Sigma is getting quite a bit of traction in the US, but also inter internationally. It's just a generic way to describe a signature, which makes it easier to, to share um, that information across um, individuals and across different systems, um, such as SIMS. So the SOC Prime integration um, sort of starts um, with using uh, the SOC Prime uh, um, uh, un, uh, un decoder uh, to convert uh, Sigma to Azure Sentinel. So there's there's a, a, a set of uh, Sigma rules and you can input those and you can get out of that um, the, uh, the Azure Sentinel uh, KQL queries um, that would be associated with that. And then you can simply within the SOC Prime um, threat um, uh, detection marketplace configure the integration with Azure Sentinel by entering a few um, parameters and from that uh, you can you can deploy uh, the rule directly into Azure Sentinel. So the, the uh, SOC Prime detection marketplace um, um, supports a variety of different um, SIM solutions as well in terms of converting into their format, um, but this is the only integration that will actually push the detection rules into Azure Sentinel or into um, that SIM. Um, and we get to it's quite a bit simpler to do that by virtue of being um, a cloud native SIM solution, um, but a pretty cool, easy integration. You can look in the Azure or in the, the SOC Prime threat detection uh, marketplace um, for uh, you know, the catalog of uh, detection rules that are available there, select the ones that you want and push those to Sentinel. Or as we saw on the first screen, if you have a, a Sigma rule yourself, you can put that into the converter and, and also get um, that output in the Azure Sentinel format. Uh, and once you've done that, you can view and edit um, that rule directly in Azure Sentinel. Show, it shows up as a new uh, analytic rule along with the others that you have running in your environment. OK, uh, doing a, a little bit of a click down into the MSSP and multi-tenancy support. Um, so here is the new um, interface to enable you to look at incidents across multiple customer workspaces. 
And so you can see now um, uh, the, the view of Azure Sentinel workspaces and, and from that we get a view of all of the workspaces that we have access to. You can select one or more of these and then the view incidents page um, here. And that's going to take you to this unified incident dashboard. Um, and as I was mentioning, this is again kind of looking across multiple customers. So we can see, you know, you can, uh, we can see we're getting a variety of different workspaces here. You can actually click from here directly into that workspace if you just wanted to go directly into um, that Azure Sentinel instance. Or you can click to begin an investigation again in that customer workspace. You can drill down into the incident details, or you can go directly to automation playbooks again in that customer's workspace. Um, so super easy here. We can we sort, we can filter, we can um, uh, you know manage our queue um, of of incidents across multiple customers uh, from this experience. The other thing again that we're hearing more and more about um, is the use of CDI, CICD and automation uh, to deploy Azure Sentinel content um, across multiple um, Azure Sentinel workspaces. Um, and again, this can be MSSPs that are trying to manage multiple customer deployments. They've got a set of uh, alert rules, for example, or hunting queries. They want to deploy those to all of the customers that they're managing. They can do that or big organizations that maybe have multiple workspaces um, uh, within their own enterprise uh, can benefit from this as well. There's a great blog post which is linked here in the headline um, that will take you to a really detailed step-by-step -step guide um, for, for how to um, uh, operationalize uh, this configuration. So the, the, that, that pipeline um, you know, starts with your GitHub where you can manage um, this content um, just like you do other code um, uh, and then since you know kind of connects into Azure DevOps through the Azure pipeline um, and into Azure Sentinel um, and I won't get into all of the flow there but I encourage you to check out that blog post for a detailed step-by-step -step, um, guide on how to do that on the right though um, we're also seeing a list of, of what are the different kinds of components um, that you can leverage and, and how do you how do you do that um, and so you can see that onboarding capabilities, you know, creating new workspaces, um, that's available through APIs and, and PowerShell and ARM. Alert rules, this is one of the more common um, places where we see um, uh, customers and partners wanting to deploy the same set of rules across multiple workspaces, and that's available through the API and PowerShell. Hunting queries, very, very similar um, kinds of scenarios there. Um, and then also the ability to do uh, the same with playbooks and workbooks uh, via ARM and connectors via API. So uh, lots of, of um, new guidance and, and some new capabilities that uh, enable that automation uh, across multiple workspaces. So that was a quick, quick, quick run through of the new uh, capabilities that we launched at RSA. I thank you for joining us um, uh, uh, for the, the uh, presentation today. Encourage you to check out um, those resources um, that were um, referenced uh, today in the, the session. Some great blog posts that will give you more detail um, on some of the, the areas that we that we discussed. We do have, as we're running a bit um, uh, early, we do have some time for questions. Um, so if there are any questions uh, that you have, um, uh, feel free to submit those and we'll take we'll take a handful of them before we wrap up today. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah. Um, so yes, there's some questions and uh, I'll just uh, read them out to you. So there's uh, uh, seems like there are very few taxi two feeds at this time and the question is is there any plans for taxi one so we don't have plans at this time there's pretty pretty significant um, uh, upgrade we should say between one and two um, and we do see yes while there were more um, uh, 1.0 uh, implementations 
uh, in the past, we do see that most folks are now moving toward two or two one. Um, and so we don't at this point plan to go back and, and provide support for uh, Taxi 1.0, uh, but we're working very closely with a, a range of different threat intelligence platforms and 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 feeds um, to ensure that that they can support the, the two or, or 2.1 uh, version of, of Taxi. We do also support threat intelligence integration via the graph security API. Um, and so the way that that actually manifests is that there are native um, connectors available in a range of threat intelligence platforms, Anomaly, Threat Connect, the open source MISP solution, um, and uh, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting um, a handful here, but a number of the leading threat intelligence platforms um, have these native integrations. They leverage the Microsoft Graph Security API under the hood. That's less critical to know, um, but the, there's a connector that enables that within um, Azure Sentinel, and that provides another mechanism to ingest threat intelligence data in, in Sentinel. In addition, you can use the Graph Security API directly, um, not through a, a native integration. So you have a couple of different ways to ingest threat intelligence data into Azure Sentinel. Um, so the taxi connector, those native integrations with threat intelligence platforms, and then uh, uh, leveraging the the API directly. Great. OK, so the next one is, uh, do we have to use Lighthouse to get the unified view? Uh, that is a great question. I believe that you do, um, but I would need to check, um, you know, if you have within your own tenant, um, um, multiple workspaces, which can happen. Um, in that scenario, you may not require Lighthouse. So just, just to be clear, so any, any one subscription, um, one tenant um, could have multiple um, Azure Sentinel workspaces. Um, and, and that's a little bit of a different scenario than multiple tenants, multiple subscriptions um, with uh, multiple Azure Sentinel instances. So multiple tenants I know requires Lighthouse, whether Lighthouse is required if you're actually working in the context of a single tenant, but you have multiple workspaces. Um, that's a bit of an open question for me. So happy to take that offline and, and, and follow up. Okay, perfect, thank you. And uh, the next one is, what is the expected release date for the cross uh, course workspace incident view? That is available in preview today. Okay. And I see a couple more coming in. Let me just check. What is the easiest way to collect on-premise uh, servers event logs into Sentinel? We want to implement it for our on-prem servers. So there's a variety of different ways uh, to do that um, and some guidance um, around that. Again, I point to the documentation or blog post for additional information, um, but there are agents um, uh, uh, that can be installed on um, uh, servers and used to collect data. Um, there also are some kind of um, uh, standard uh, mechanisms that we support, such as syslog, um, but it will depend a bit on your particular environment and um, you know what what operating operating system you're running on those servers. So um, I'd point you to some some offline documentation for more information about that. Okay, and uh, thanks, Ryan. Already posted uh, some YouTube link out there in that reference. So moving on to the next one. Uh, can the suppression happen using multiple rules? Uh, for example, if the same IP and the severity suppressed for five minutes, etc. Today, all of the suppression, grouping, and aggregation is happening within the context of a single analytic rule. So we are looking at extending that to do grouping across um, multiple um, analytic rules. Um, but the new capabilities that we rolled out, those are all in the context of, a of an individual, a specific analytic rule, not across multiple rules. Great, thank you. And uh, next one, will there be any sort of testing built into the CICD pipeline? So we're, we are working on um, some built-in validation um, for our own GitHub, um, uh, and and so there's there is some work and flight there. Um, 
but I'm less I'm less sure about the you know kind of um, uh, kind of broader set of CI/CD um, capabilities. I do see that we've got someone on our team who's got a bit more expertise in that area, who's online, um, and maybe she's uh, pretty if you're able to um, to to help support um, uh, that question in the chat um, or point to some resources there. That'd be super helpful. Yeah, pretty already jumped in and she's replying. Thank you for right. that. Thanks. Uh, so let me see. To view Sentinel customer in the same incident view, you need the uh, lighthouse first, right? That's the question. I have a lighthouse enabled, but still cannot uh, cannot see the top button in Sentinel that combines the views. Okay. So let's let's take that offline. Um, it may be that for some reason your your subscription doesn't have access to the uh, to the preview. Um, so let's let's take that offline and see if we can't get that resolved for you. Sure. Is uh, there a way to get the S flow and the uh, net flow data to Sentinel? Yeah, so I think the uh, again there there are standard a set of standard mechanisms uh, for ingesting data into Sentinel, and that uh, tends to support a very long tail of security um, and uh, of security data types. Um, so um, so it's certainly possible to ingest uh, that data using one of those those standard mechanisms. Okay, thank you for that. Um, is the log stash connector available as uh, GA? The new log stash uh, uh, connector, the native one uh, that we're working on, is not uh, in GA yet. It is in um, uh, in, in a more of a, a preview form, so uh, not yet. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, that pretty much concludes all the questions uh, from the audience. Uh, anyone from the team has any other questions? Okay, uh, just some reminders before actually ending the call. So our next scheduled uh, webinars are on March 11. That is exactly a week from today on Azure Security Center security benchmark policy. And the next Azure Sentinel one is on March 18 on a deep dive on threat intelligence. And for details and registrations, please uh, visit our uh, aka.ms slash security webinars page. And uh, we're also finalizing our April webinar schedule. And once the dates are confirmed, we'll uh, update the same website for the save the date dates. And uh, in case we missed to answer your questions, or if you have additional questions, you can visit us on our Azure Sentinel forum as already published on the Q&A announcements. Uh, that is aka.ms slash Azure Security, sorry, Azure Sentinel community. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for a great presentation. And uh, thank you to the rest of the team uh, helping answering the questions and most of all, I want to thank all of you to, for being part of our community and for joining us on these webinars. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye.